There is a fun topic that I've been meaning to cover for quite a while now on my channel, but haven't got around to it. It does come up a fair bit at the higher level of the GRE in particular, but could also come up in the GMAT. And it's to do with ordering letters, specifically letters. Yes, this could apply to objects, but most often it's asked about letters. And a sample question would be such as the one on screen. In how many ways can the letters in the name Philip be rearranged? Now, even if you're someone who can answer this question, I've got two follow-up questions afterwards, the last one of which is particularly difficult. So this is going to be an introductory lesson on how to do this, and I'm going to ramp it up for question two and question three. Okay, but how do we do it? Well, some of you may think it's just as simple as saying we have six letters and therefore the answer is six factorial. The first letter can be any of six, so that's six. The second letter can be any of five, so that's five. And that's where we get six times five times four times three times two times one, six factorial. Why is that not the correct answer? Well, because we have duplicate letters. Notice in my name, and this is how it's spelled, we have two P's and two I's. Now, if we treat those I's as different, we're going to get an inflated score. We're going to get double the number of outcomes and think there's double the number of possibilities. But actually, just flip the two I's around and you still end up with the same word. Same thing with the P's. Flip the two P's around and you still end up with the same Philip. And this applies to any ordering of the letters. Imagine we write down L I I P P H. If you write that down and then look at it and then flip the two I's, nothing changes. You're still left with the same arrangement of letters. So because there are two I's involved and two P's involved, we've overestimated the number of possibilities with just simply doing six factorial. So what do we do? To get rid of all those duplicates, we have to divide by two factorial to account for the duplicate P's and two factorial again to account for the duplicate I's. Because, as I've said, the two I's and two P's are interchangeable. This gives us six factorial divided by two factorial, two factorial. The first two was for the I's, the second two was for the P's. To work this out, if you're not familiar, you would write six times five times four times three times two times one for six factorial, and just two times one each time for the two factorial. Now, I strongly recommend cancelling stuff out before you work out that long thing on a calculator or manually. For example, the two times one in the denominator can be cancelled out with one of the two times ones in the numerator. And this is what you're left with if you do that. Additionally, that two in the denominator could be cancelled out either with the six or with the four to further simplify the calculation. I've cancelled it out with the four leaving just one in the denominator and six times five times two times three in the numerator. Six times five is 30 times two is 60 times three is 180. So there are 180 ways to rearrange the letters in the name Philip. But if we've just done six factorial, what is that? 720? That would be a massive overestimate of the actual number of ways because we have duplicate P's and duplicate I's. Now, I hope that makes sense because I'm now going to do some harder examples. Let's go on to the second example before we get onto the really hard one. In how many ways can the letters in the word success be rearranged? If you like, pause the video, try this one yourself, see if you get it right, including the calculation involved. Success has seven letters, I think. Yep, <laughs> seven letters, that's seven factorial. But if you notice, there are three S's and two C's. And so many of these seven factorial arrangements are actually duplicates of one another. Take the basic arrangement, success, spelt in that way. If you flipped one of the S's with one of the other S's, you'd still end up with the word success, even though seven factorial would count that as a different example. And so what do we do? We divide by three factorial to account for the duplicate S's, and two factorial to account for the duplicate C's. Not just dividing by three and two, by the way, it's three factorial and two factorial, because we can 
rearrange those three S's in three factorial ways, in six ways. So that's why you've got to divide by three factorial. Or more simply, you can just remember, if there's three of that letter, divide by three factorial. If there's two of that letter, divide by two factorial. If there were four of that letter, you divide by four factorial. Anyway, let's do the calculation. You see the three times two times one in the denominator. Just cancel that out before you type in the calculator. It's not strictly necessary, it just saves a lot of time. This will leave us with a simpler calculation. And again, we can cancel the two in the denominator with either the six or the four. I think I did it with the four at the end, giving seven times six times five times two. Seven times six is 42 times five, that's 210 times two, that's 420. Or we could just use a calculator. So there are 420 ways you can uniquely arrange the letters in the word success. But now what's this super hard example that I've been promising? Well, it looks easy at first sight because we're just dealing with the letters in the word tutor, but I've added a condition and conditions usually freak students out. Even my 165 level students, they get freaked out by this because I've added a condition. In how many ways can the letters in the word tutor be rearranged such that the two T's are not next to each other? And that condition really freaks students out. But I'm gonna show you two methods for handling when there is a condition attached to the question. Method number one is that we count the total number of arrangements without any conditions and then take away all the unacceptable options. Let me show you that method first. It's fairly involved, but then we'll move on to a different method and see which one you prefer. So what's the total number of arrangements? You can pause the video and tell me this because it's the same as in previous questions. Tutor has five letters and two of them are duplicates, so we divide by two factorial. This gives us five times four times three, which is, I think, 60. So there are 60 arrangements, unique arrangements, I should say, of the word tutor. And now we're gonna subtract all the unacceptable options. Well, the condition they gave us was that the two T's can't be next to each other. So those are the unacceptable options. So we're gonna manually, as I've written at the bottom, count out those unacceptable options. For example, the first two T's could be next to each other right at the beginning. So we have T, T, that's unacceptable, remember, and then three blanks. Imagine T, T, U, O, R, or T, T, O, R, U. But any option or arrangement that begins with two T's next to each other is unacceptable, remember. Now, why did I write three factorial? Because those three blanks, the remaining three letters, U, O, and R, could themselves be rearranged in three factorial ways. So it's not like we just have one unacceptable option, T, T, blank, 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 because the three blanks could themselves be rearranged. For example, T, T, U, O, R, T, T, U, R, O, T, T, O, R, U, etc., etc. There's six different ways. Again, feel free to pause the video and think about this because it is a definitely 170 level question, very hard. But you might notice TT blank 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 isn't the only unacceptable arrangement. It could be blank TT blank blank with the two T's being in position two and three. That's another three factorial unacceptable options. Or the two T's could be position three and position four. That's another three factorial unacceptable options. Remember, the three factorial comes from the blanks, not from the t's, they're just set in stone. And finally, the two t's could be at the end, that's also unacceptable, and that's another three factorial unacceptable options. Adding up these unacceptable options, we have four sets of three factorial. Three factorial is six, and four times six is 24. So in total, there are 24 unacceptable options, and so we do the total, which is 60, we worked that out earlier, take away the unacceptable options, 24, leaving us with the desired options of 36, and that's the correct answer. Now, many of you who attempted this question by pausing it may have tried another method. So I'm gonna show you method two, and that's simply counting the acceptable options. 
instead of doing the total minus unacceptable, we just go straight for the acceptable options. You have to be a bit more dexterous with manually counting out the different T positions, but it's a fun way of doing it. I'm not sure which way I would have done in the exam either way. What's the first acceptable arrangement? With T in position one and another T in position three. That's acceptable because the two T's are not next to each other. Why three factor rule? Again, because we have three blanks, the U, O, and R, and they could be in three factorial arrangements. What's the second acceptable option? The two T's in position one and four. Notice that we keep the first T in position one and gradually move the second T along. Don't just randomly pick options, be systematic. That's really important. Keep the first T on the left and gradually move the other T along. So you'll see for option three, we've kept the first T in position one and the other T's right at the end. This is also an acceptable arrangement because the two T's are not next to each other. When you run out of space on the right, we just move that first T one position to the right, giving us T's in position two and four. That's also acceptable because they're not next to each other. Then move the T on the right as usual, giving us position two and position five. And finally, we've run out of space on the right again, so we move that first T one to the right, giving us the final acceptable arrangement. In total, this was six acceptable options, each one having three factorial or six arrangements. Six times six, or six times three factorial, which is six, equals 36. So notice we get the same answer as earlier. Either way, I know that this final example was significantly harder than the previous one, but I just wanted to give something to those students who are really pushing for a 170. Vast majority of students watching this only really need to know the earlier two examples because even they count as 165 level examples. So you're good to go knowing those. If you learn anything, please do leave a like and let me know. I try to read and respond to all the comments. Have a lovely day.